Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I'm going to be giving you guys a brief introduction to prefabs inside of the Unity game engine. So inside of any Unity scene, you're going to have many different game objects that have their own functions, such as this camera object, and here we'll talk about this later, a little prefab spawner. And those game objects can have components attached to them, and those components can have many different properties. So when you want to create a template out of a game object so that you can reuse it over and over again, that's when you create a prefab inside of the file system of your project that would normally be down here in the project window. So any game object that exists inside of your scene, you can actually make it into prefab just by dragging it down into the assets. So if I wanted to, I could bring one down here like that. And then you're going to see this little blue game object appear in your assets file. So this is a prefab file. You can see the dot prefab at the bottom here. So in any game object that is connected to a prefab is going to have this blue icon for the cube rather than the original uh, black with gray outline. So if you have one of these prefab based game objects, you can click into the prefab to open the asset. And then here's where you can edit the original prefab. So anytime you create a copy from a prefab, you're instancing the prefab game object. So you, the prefab is your original template for a game object, and you can set up any defaults that objects of that type should have. And those defaults can be which components appear over here on the right and any of the properties for those game objects. And then back in your main game scene, these would be the instances from those prefabs. So for instance, we can see over here for the prefab spawner that the default spawn time is one second over here. But if we go to the main scene, I can change this here to two. So now that this instance has overwritten the original value of the property, you can see that this property becomes bolded. And this represents that this is differing from the original. So the instance copies don't need to be the exact same as the original. It's just by default, they have the original values. So if I click over here, to the prefab asset, you can still see this is one second here. Now, if you want to just create a new object and then turn it into a prefab like a player object, then you can just add a new game object in your scene. So right click here and then choose create empty. I'll call this player. And then so that we edit everything on the prefab asset, I'll go into some folders I've created characters and then player and I'll just drag this prefab into here. So now I will double click on the player prefab to edit it. And any components that I want the copies of the player in the game to have, I can just add over here on the right, just like you would any other game object. So I'll add a component here and let's do a sprite renderer. And now let's go back out to the main scene. You can see here that this instanced object has the sprite renderer now, but there's no sprite assigned. So if I want to assign a sprite to every instance, I go back into the prefab assets. And then let's click on the selector for the sprite. And then where it says none sprite here, let's go into my art assets. I'll go into RPG pack and you would just get the assets relevant to whatever you're making. So here I'm going to grab a frame from this sprite run animation. So there we have our character. And if we go back out to the main scene, we can also see that that same character is represented here. And let's change the position of this character. I'll just move him a bit over here so that we can actually see him. And now where the prefabs are really going to shine is when we just create multiple instances of that character. So I'll move this over here and over here as well. So now we have three copies from the same prefab and all of these. If I click into any of these arrows for the prefab asset and we change one property in here, like the color of the sprite, let's just do that for fun. We'll uh, make the sprite tinted red. And we go back out, we see that that affects all of these instances. So you change once and it propagates to everything. And then if you want unique values, then you can just go into the individual instances and change the color to something else. So here I reset the color back to white, but anything that is still using the prefabs values is going to have that. And then the edited values are going to be bolded here, as you can see. So another place where prefabs are really powerful is when you want to spawn a instance of a game object after the game has launched. So obviously if you want to create something, you probably are going to define what that something should be ahead of time. So that's where you use your prefab. And then when you just want to create an instance of it, you can use a script to do so. So in this prefab spawner script, I can just drag a game object into the slot, which I would do now. So let's put the player into the prefab slot here. And now the script is going to spawn copies of this player at random locations while the game runs. 
if you want to see the code really quick, we can just take a quick look at that. So here we have the prefab object. So this can be any game object that we want to put in there, but it needs to be from the project. So it's going to be a prefab. Um, we have the spawn to time. How long has elapsed since the last time? So every one second, it's going to spawn a dude. It's going to spawn a copy of the prefab. And here you can see we're just keeping track of the time. And when the time has elapsed, we spawn the prefab, in which case we get a random location for the prefab. And we use the instantiate method on the prefab game object to take the original and create a copy of it. And then we can change values in it, such as the position of that instanced copy. So initially, the instance will have the same base template of the prefab, but as soon as it's created in the game world, we can change anything we want about it. So when I try to run the game here, you can see the copies of the player are spawning, but we have a little issue here, which is that the Z position of the characters is actually set to a value where it can't be seen by the camera. So we could change these individually for every single object, but we can also just jump into the player template and let's change the default value here for the position to zero. We can also do that for the X and Y position, usually a good idea. So it's now centered in our prefab area. And now uh, back out here, we can reset each of these values individually to what it needs to be. So for the X and Y, we do want the custom positions, but for Z, I'm going to reset that to the zero that's in the prefab. So let's just do that for each of these objects. And anything created with the prefab spawner is going to have that zero position. So now when we go ahead and hit play, it should appear correctly for our three originals and then any of the copies that we decide to create. So in a nutshell, prefabs are basically a template for a game object and you can create many copies of it and any copies created from a prefab can have their own custom properties edited. But you can also change the properties in a prefab if you want to propagate that change across all of your game objects that don't have custom values set. So prefabs are a really core part of Unity and super useful.